Hi, I'm Sean Carruthers, and welcome to How Do I on Butterscotch.com. In this series, we're taking a look at GarageBand on the iPad. In this episode, we're going to talk about software instruments, in this case specifically, drums. Now, drums are the backbeat of any song that you're going to do, so you'll want to make sure that you get a good drum sound and make sure that it's a good rhythm. Now, there's two different ways you can do that inside GarageBand. One of them is by playing them yourself, and the other one is by using a smart instrument. Let's start with playing it yourself. You go to the Instruments menu and swipe over until you get to the option that says Drums. Click through it and it'll open up a drum kit. Now one really nice thing about all of the instruments you'll see inside GarageBand is that they're touch sensitive using the accelerometer inside the iPad. The screen itself isn't touch sensitive, but by measuring how hard you're hitting it using the accelerometer, it can tell how hard you want to hit the instrument itself. So with drums, you have different effects depending on how hard you hit the drum. The sound you get is also affected by where you hit the drum on the screen. So if you tap in the center of the snare, for example, you get a snare sound. Tap on one side and you get a rim shot. Tap on one side of the hi-hat and you get a closed hat sound. Tap on the other side and you get an open hat sound. Now you do have more than one drum kit to choose from on GarageBand. So above the drum kit you'll actually see a little button that has the name of the kit you're playing. Tap on that and it'll reveal a whole pile of other kits that you can play. Select on one of the other kits and your drum kit will change to reflect what you've just chosen. Now on GarageBand you have two different types of kits you can play in here. You've got the original traditional kit with the drums laid out in front of you, and then you have more electronic style kits, say like a drum machine like you play in a hip hop song. If you use one of the electronic kits, you do have a few knobs up top typically that allow you to adjust the sound using little tweaks that you would use on a synthesizer or an electronic drum kit. If you tweak the knobs on one of these electronic kits, you can actually save it for later use and make it into a custom kit that you come back to. Now if you prefer not to do all of the hard work of entering all of the drums in by yourself, you can actually use what's called smart drums. Go back to the instruments menu and slide over until you get to smart drums. You'll notice this one because it has a gear around the outside and all the smart instruments on GarageBand have this. Now you notice here instead of one of the kits, you'll actually have a grid that has two different directions. You take items over from the right hand side and drag them over into this grid. Now if you move this item higher in the grid, it'll be louder and if you move it down lower, it'll be quieter. If you move it over to the left, it'll be more simple. If you move it over to the right, it'll be more complex. So you can take all of the different elements in your kit and place them on this grid and have different variations on what each of these things will sound like. Now you can actually take two items and place them on exactly the same spot. You'll only be able to move the top item after that, but you can put everything on exactly the same space if you do want to. If you don't want to go through all the hassle of figuring out where each of these things should go, you can actually hit the dice icon on the bottom left hand corner and randomize. It'll create a version of a drum kit for you using random elements. If you don't like what it picked for you, you can hit the dice icon again and it'll pick a new version. You can keep doing this until you get one that you like. Again, you have the ability to change the type of kit you're using by clicking on the name of the kit over on the top left. Choose the kit you want and then all of the elements that you have over on the right hand side will change. If you just want to clear everything that's on the grid, you can hit the reset button over on the right and it'll just clear everything out and you can start again. Then once you have a beat you like, you can hit the record button over at the top and it'll start laying it into a track. We'll talk more about the basics of layering all of your instruments into a complete track later on in this series. You can see other parts in this series where we show you how the other instruments work and how to layer them all together. You can get the show notes for this and the other parts in the series at butterscotch.com.